Understanding the components of the three-day cycle will have you looking at the market in a whole different light, and a much deeper understanding of not only how the market moves, but when, where, and why you should be executing certain types of trades. Each day of the cycle is feeding you more and more information about what kind of three-day cycle you're in or weekly template that you're currently in. And having a playbook of these setups is what has allowed me to obtain a certain level of consistency because every single day is evolving and it's each a piece of the puzzle. But once you see the same pieces of the puzzle over and over again, it becomes a lot easier to place them where they're supposed to go. By the end of this video, I want everybody to understand how to identify the different types of day one and what those day ones actually mean. What type of information is day one and two of the cycle feeding you and the different types of day three trades that I personally look for on a day-to-day -day and a week-to-week -week basis. Now, I personally learned about this cycle through Stacy Burke Trading and Steve Morrow, but it's important to understand its origin. Uh, back in the 1950s, George Douglas Taylor I was down in the pits, the trading pits, and he realized that the market was in a one, two, three rhythmic motion. Uh, and he noticed in talking with the other people there, the institutions and things that they were purposely doing things where they would run the market up for, you know, two, three days, and then they would run it back down. And that is where he developed the, the three day cycle. Uh, basically, he's saying that there's a buy day, a sell day, which is where you're selling uh, the day after you bought, so you would buy the close of a day, then the next day on the rally you would sell, and then the day after or the day that you sold, you would look to sell short. Now, obviously that's not what we're doing, but understanding that alone is gonna help you to identify you're looking for within the three-day three, si three day cycle and why. That is an important concept to understand. Although I do not buy and sell the close of the day, these ideas are a lot of times perfectly in line with the three-day setups and signal days that are currently used. The first red, the first green days, the inside days, the narrow range days, uh, the outside days, which is basically just an outside bar on the daily chart. The inside days are inside bars on the daily chart and the three days of breakouts where the, the market has gone for two to three days in a direction and closed in breakout. And then on the next day, you know, you would use that as a signal and the following day you would be looking for either a higher high to be put in place for a long position or a lower low to be put in place for a short position. Now, if the market just always went up for two days and then came back down for two days or went up for two days and then came back down for a day, the market would never go anywhere. It would just be in a trading range forever. Uh, and that's obviously not how things work. So sometimes it's going to go into expansion mode where higher time frames, the four hour, the daily, uh, the monthly charts, they're expanding a consolidation to one side or the other. And it's moving and running for longer time periods than just, you know, three days. Sometimes you'll get these five day runs, seven day runs, uh, where it just keeps on breaking out to the upside or down to the downside over and over again. And you're like, man, when is this thing ever going to come back? Uh, these are what is called an extended run where they're doing a larger time frame expansion and a lot of times it's best to just not counter trend those moves at all because you're going against the larger time frame expansions. Uh, during these runs, I can do either one of two things, wait for a clear reversal, or I can just trade along with the trend. Uh, if it's going down from the high of the day, if it's going up from the low of the day, looking for those types of trades. Uh, but most of the time, me personally, I'm just going to wait for the three-day cycle to kind of get back into its rhythm. And then I'll look for my trades from there, waiting for those good signal days, first red, first green, uh, those types of templates where I can have a much higher probability of success. This was not too long ago on the NASDAQ. This is what I'm talking about by the extended runs where they've broken out a previous day's high, these solid black lines here, previous day's high and low. And then the purple line is the previous day's close. Uh, so as it's going higher, right, breakout, 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 that's the third day, fourth day, fifth day, they just keep on breaking out higher and higher. Uh, but you can tell that this is just a really strong trend and sometimes it'll be hard to see in real time that you're in one of these extended runs until it finally comes to an end. Uh, but if you start getting multiple days of breakouts where they just keep on going one direction, dragging higher and higher, and notice that within this, this is a one hour chart, uh, the, no lower lows, right? Just really clear, nice, clean structure of higher highs and higher lows probably best not to go against that. Maybe not even trade with the trend because you can tell up here, like sometimes there's pullbacks, right? So maybe you could have traded this short and, and got some points or pips or whatever, but overall the market is going higher. So it's best to take the parabolic opportunity from the low of the day uh, that's gonna go higher very quickly and expand those ranges further. That's where your good risk to reward is going to come in. I understand there's a lot of words on a lot of these slides, but bear with me to the end. I've got a lot of examples and going over the different types of templates 
And you're not going to want to miss that because that's the bread and butter of the entire slideshow. Also, down in the description below is the link to this slideshow so you can follow along, download it, do whatever you'd like, as well as a free Discord. Uh, over 4,500 members in there all trading this style and sharing their thoughts and information about uh, what they think is going to happen on that day. And everyone's kind of just sharing information. So it's a really good place to be. Link is in the description. All right, going into the three-day rectangle, peak formation high and low. This is something that Stacey Burke calls the day zero setup where over the course of you know two to three days, sometimes four, they build this rectangle. Uh, this is usually a really good do not counter trend sort of situation where they break out of these rectangles and they will not come back at least for that day. And it will just expand all the way up or down. Sometimes the three day cycle will present a certain type of template that many will miss if focusing on what day of the cycle it is because it's going to be a day one and then immediately following the next day, it'll be a f another day one and it can be a little bit confusing. The three-day rectangle, the market puts or attempts to go above the previous day's high, then they go down and they try to go below the previous day's low. This is all at, in the current week, right? So if they broke out of the high of the current week and that fails, they go down and they try to break out of the low of the current week and that fails, it's going to build a box. All right, this creates a two-cycle day ones in a row, but more importantly is where is the rectangle? How is it formed? How is it shaped? It should be shaped like a rectangle. These usually result in large range expansions due to the buildup of consolidation. Sometimes there will be a pause on the third day. So what I'm saying here is, you know, the equation isn't perfect. Sometimes it'll be three days and on the fourth day it'll go. Sometimes it'll be two days, but on the third day it will go. Um, you just have to watch price action and structure and things like that in the time of day. And sometimes it can be a little frustrating, but you know, it won't happen in the morning session of New York. Sometimes it'll be in the afternoon session, or maybe it'll happen in Asia or London. It's all about your session that you're trading and just looking for the setup if it occurs. All right, so let's explain this little example here. Uh, this was this solid, not solid, but the dash red line here is the beginning of a new week. So this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the breakout of Friday's low and then how it failed. Notice how it closed back inside of Friday's range. That'd be the first attempt to go lower. That's also going to restart the cycle because this was a failed breakout at the low of the current week. Monday is the first day of the week that makes it the current week, I guess. And that's going to be the first day where they failed. Now, they tried to go above Monday's high, and that also failed. So now we have a breakout low fail, breakout high fail, day one of the cycle, day one of the cycle. And what I've found is that a lot of people will start focusing on that. It's like, okay, well, it's day one again, so we, now we got day two and three. Whenever we have this sort of scenario where they break out and they break out peak formation low, peak formation high, I automatically start looking for that rectangle and trying to identify if it's in my session, the setup. So if this would have continued to consolidate on the, this was the fourth day, but on this third day, you know, I could have taken a trend trend trade or a breakout trade here and then it didn't follow through and that's fine but on the following day looking for the same exact trade and then now that it's broken out of that rectangle not counter trending that trade and allowing it to do its thing i've got the range expansions up here on the screen uh, so this would be measuring from here to here one full expansion of the range uh, pretty accurately so let's just go over this one more time whenever you have a peak formation low some of you may have seen my earlier videos about weekly templates uh, this is part of that tips and tricks slide uh, peak formation low peak formation high that builds the box usually when you have a nice tightly wound box that's good this one is pretty tightly wound uh, even if i would have projected this line across here and then here for where the breakouts had failed you could see how much more tightly wound it actually is and then this was the asian london and then the new york session over here so all we had throughout this entire day was trend trades. This is a one hour chart, uh, slight small pullbacks and then continuations uh, all throughout that day. But of course, there will always be some slightly different variations. It's not always going to look exactly the same every single time. Uh, sometimes the rectangle will not be as clear. It could be a bit more wide when the, the swings are a bit wider and the rectangle is, is a little bit more stretched out. Uh, it could be a little bit more difficult. And a lot of times when the rectangle is that wide, there's going to be a trend trade from the inside of the box back to the outer edges of the box, either high or low. And that might be my trade where I take the trade from inside the box back towards the outside of the box. And then I just exit uh, because when the swing is that wide, the, uh, the probability of it expanding that range and actually doing the full expansion is a little bit lower at least on the day it could be a bit more wide or no clear and buy sell signals for the day or within the week which can become a little bit more confusing and you need to know when to switch gears and by switch gears i mean not necessarily looking for the traditional three-day cycle and that's what i was referring to in the previous slide where they broke out low they broke out high day one day one 
And you might be focused on that thinking, okay, day one, day one, and then day two and three. But in reality, you should have switched gears to, okay, three day rectangle. That's the trade that I'm looking for. Uh, buy day, sell day, sell short day. This is what I'm referring to by the traditional three day cycle, day one, two, and three. And transition to looking at an extended run, or in this case, the three day rectangle. All right. And I've got some examples of these three day rectangles. Now, this is a bit of a wider one where they broke out to the high this was a, a friday they broke out at the high of the week and failed day one and then they did the same thing on monday but at the other end of the range so this it's the same template just uh it started on friday um it's the second day is now on uh, monday and then tuesday has the opportunity to go from maybe the inside back towards the outside because the rectangle was so large that you still have a really high opportunity for a uh, good risk to reward if you trade from the inside back towards the outside and then i'm just using price action the low of the day uh, peak formation so in this case there's a peak formation low that was the last one that was made they made a higher high push one push two and push three into the low of the day and now i can use the time of day and there's a, a extended or excuse me a shortened w at the low of the day and a consolidation and a breakout like that's exactly what i'm looking for the good price action that i'd be looking for to take a trade like this all right so let's go over it one more time peak formation high the high of the week from friday day one of the cycle and then a peak formation low at the low of monday uh, below Friday's low and also failing. So this they have both failed creating the box. This has created the rectangle high and low. We got a higher high on this day and a, a creeper back down into the low and a consolidation at the low. The uh, shortened W down here, which is also part of a kind of an extended W as well. Uh, consolidation and a breakout. Perfect. This is going from the inside back towards the outside of the box, which provides lots of reward and very little risk. Another variation. This is a one hour chart. Uh, we had a day one down here. So they broke out down low and that failed the next day. And then it came back up and it also failed up top. So now we have day one, day two uh, of the three day cycle. So day one, day two, they still broke out up here. And then it attempted to retest the high up here on day three. And then it broke down. So we got this gap down. Uh, this is peak formation low, peak formation high, and then this is the rectangle, and then obviously you get the breakout, uh, which again, price action, you got a bear trend channel down here making lower lows and lower highs, even the larger structure, we're making lower lows and lower highs, and then you get your engulfment. Uh, should be within the, the New York session, if it happens in the London session, depending on what pair, you know, fine, but me personally trading the New York session, I'm looking for this to happen in New York around 930. I think this was either gold or a NASDAQ chart, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so this three day rectangle, do not counter trend and it breaks out and then you get your expansions of that range. And another one, peak formation high, this is the high of Monday, peak formation low, this is the low of Tuesday and also breaking out below Monday's low and then failing. So again, uh, this, I know I've put day one, day two, day three, this would be day one, this would be day one, and then this would be day two, but this is the third day of the rectangle. So day one, day two of being in this rectangle. And then day three was the breakout in this instance. And again, lower low, lower high, bear trend channel, lower lows, lower highs. Uh, do not counter trend the, the big uh, three day rectangle. Uh, so these are really good trades because they offer really good risk to reward. And usually the reward is greater than three or four. Uh, and you're, you know, obviously your risk is going to be one. So they offer a really high opportunity, All right? Same thing, peak formation low. Now this peak formation low was made over the course of two days. So this is a breakout of Thursday's low. And then it came back up and put in a peak formation high on Monday. They broke out of Friday's high and it failed as well. So now we have peak formation low, peak formation high. This would have been day one, day two, except this day one, day two. Now we got a reset again. So this is day one, day one. Again, same exact template, day one, day one, peak formation low, peak formation high, consolidation in the middle. And then we got the uh, not quite an inside day down here. They, they tapped into Monday's low, but that's fine. This was actually a first green day where they've dumped down and give you the first green day. Uh, got the sideways rectangle and a breakout. Again, do not counter trend these really wide uh, rectangles or just the three-day rectangle in general. But again, going from the inside back towards the outside could have been the opportunity here and obviously it followed through even more now we haven't even started going over how to find day one so hopefully you've made it this far in the video those three-day rectangles are going to come into or come in handy later on because when you're looking at the three-day cycle and you get those special situations you need to know like i said when to switch gears and those three-day rectangles is definitely a i'm going to stop looking at the three-day cycle and i'm just going to focus on the rectangle sort of situations but now let's go over how to find day one because it's very easy to find and i think that people overcomplicate it to the extent of like just absolute confusion but there's only a few different scenarios where day one can present and that's either going to be a failed breakout on the days so at the high of the current week so this is the highest place that the market had traveled within this current week 
and this is a 15 minute chart usually i'm using the 15 minute chart to identify these levels the the run outside of the previous day's range and the closing back down on the inside of that range at the high of the week this is the high of the week that is going to restart the cycle okay so this is friday's high we got solid candles closing above i do not count wicks if they've just wicked through the high i'm not going to count that all right but we've got solid candles closing above that level and then now they've closed the entire day back down here. That is day one of the three-day cycle. Day one can also present over the course of two days where they have broken out of a previous day's high or low at the high or low of the current week. The current week, the current week. And then on the following day, if I would have projected that breakout level across, it would then have failed on the following day. So it would look something a little bit like this. You would have previous day's high, and then the market breaks out, and then you would have your daily separator down here like this you would project this breakout level across and then on the following day the market ends up closing down over here and i'll do a little daily separator over here so this is broke out and failed over the course of two days so i would say okay this is day one this is now day two and then tomorrow is going to be day three right slowing things back down this is exactly what i was talking about on that previous slide so this market has broke out at the low of the current week uh they've closed below the previous day's low and then on the following day it closed all the way back up here now this is a perfect opportunity to look for a trade setup on this day over here. We're not talking about that right now. I just want to help you all identify day one. So the breakout here and the failure on the following day, you can project this line across like I've done here and see that they broke out and then it failed on the following day. So they could have actually closed this right here and that would have been an acceptable reset of the three-day cycle. Day one, day two, and then the following day is day three. And the last but not least reason for restarting the cycle is when day three breaks out and stays broken out because every other example that i have shown you thus far has been due to a failed breakout but what happens on day three when they break out and it does not fail what happens if it breaks out and stays broken out on day three well the cycle is continuous it just keeps on going day one two and three day one two and three day one two and three it never stops so if day three breaks out and closes outside of the previous day's range then it's still going to reset to day one. Uh, and at the day th end of day three, like I said here, no matter what, it becomes day one again. And I'm gonna show you some templates where that has happened later on. You could end up with trap volume down at the low of the week when that happens. And then it re reverses the next day again. You know, that would be day one, day two. Uh, sometimes it'll stay broken out like this, day one. And then day two, you're trending away from those day one highs and it continues to follow through. And I've got some picture examples of that here in a few slides okay just kidding it's on the next slide so we've got a day day one of the three-day cycle here they broke out of the previous day's high it's at the high of the current week and it failed which was also a first red day and then on day two we get the dump uh notice the previous day's levels always be tracking those this is day two uh so this is a breakout day and then on day three they also broke out so now we have three days uh or day three of the cycle, excuse me, and a breakout. And on day two, I've only got two questions that I need to ask myself. Is the breakout going to succeed or is it going to fail where it bursts back up here and then closes the day back up here, which would still result in day one, day two of the cycle. It's just going to be a different sort of situation. Now, in this case, obviously in hindsight, it's easy to tell, uh, but what I like to do is just project that line across because a lot of times that'll act as like a resistance area uh, and then just read price action again. So we're making three peaks here, one, two, and three. Peak formation at the high of the day, lower lows and lower highs, and a bear channel. So this is day one of the cycle, day two of the cycle, trending away from day one highs and then closing and breakout again for day three. Uh, on the following day. So what is some of the day one information that is vital to your understanding? Number one, day one of the cycle um, can turn into a signal day. You can have a first red, first green day on a day one. You could have an inside day that is also a first red or first green day. I'm going to say that again. You can have an inside day that is also a first red or a first green day. Okay. Uh, you could have an outside day where they spike both sides of the previous day's range, making an outside bar on the daily chart. That would be a day one of the three-day cycle uh, in most cases. And you can have three days of breakouts that result in day one, uh, especially if you're on that third day of breakouts and it fails, you get a day one. Or if you're on the third day of breakouts and it stays broken out on day three, then you have a day one. 
Uh, and then maybe the next day it makes a lower low and it pumps back up a little bit. And now you have your reversal trade. If day two does the opposite of what is expected, this is also vital information. This is going to come heavily into the last portions of this slideshow, especially when I start showing you the examples. Uh, so I'm going to say this again. If day two does the opposite of what is expected, this is also vital information about the template currently taking place. For example, if you have a first red day, maybe in a market that's breaking out strongly to the upside and you have a first red day. And then the following day, instead of going lower, it breaks out to the upside. Well, now you have day one, day two, day three, uh, it could be a first red day trap and this market might be ready to go parabolic to the upside. And the same exact thing goes for uh, first green day traps where maybe you have like a week one of breakouts down and you get, you know, day one of the cycle, day two, you get a first green day. And then the following day breaks out to the downside or goes down the next day. Uh, again, this market might be ready to go vertical to the downside. And that is all information that is being fed to you by the three-day cycle. So this is an example of what should happen after you get a day one and a first red day, right? We have the large pump day, a day that attempted to go higher at the high of the current week. The breakout failed. You get a day one of the cycle and a first red day. And then you get this nice little end of day consolidation, a rectangle that breaks out and dumps down on day two. That is what is expected to happen on a first red day. That is a great trading setup. Now, what happens when that does not happen? Of course, we'll see some examples of that here shortly. Just because you have a day one that is a signal day, such as first red day, does not mean that the market will behave accordingly the next day. And that's why it's a signal, but not necessarily a setup. That's why it's a signal, but not necessarily a setup. The signal is telling you to look for the setup the following day, and that's why it's important to have an understanding of market structure as well as different price action patterns and price action in general so you can read the market in your session and make better trading decisions. And I've got plenty of videos like that on my channel within the playlists. Um, so make sure to check those out. Using the time of day, looking for setups in the session I am trading and watching price action is the deciding factor on whether or not I actually have a setup. For example, yesterday was day one of the cycle and a first red day. However, today has been breaking structure to the upside and they keep breaking out of rectangles and going higher uh, with no signs of reversal. It might be best for me to wait and see if something will develop for tomorrow for day three of the cycle. Let's bring this down here and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this is an unexpected variation where you get a first red day. Uh, they've even made sort of a lower low down here. They broke out. It failed. They broke down and then it pulls back up over here. And we got this consolidation and a breakout towards the end of the day leading back into a consolidation. Now on the following day, you could have your end of day consolidation drawn and be looking for them to reverse that down, but there's been no lower low now. In fact, they've made a higher high and pulled back and engulfed uh, in the New York session. So this is now displaying, also these bars have little to no overlap. Uh, this is a strongly pulling market. They're pulling up and dragging those shorts higher and higher before going vertical. This is all indications and in price action displaying that the market is in a trend, higher highs and higher lows, and that we are continuing that trend now, uh, which is going against what this first red day is displaying. So part of my playbook is actually looking for this opportunity. I project these levels across, and once we start breaking out to the upside, making those higher highs and higher lows, in my session and the price action is displaying that that is the type of template that I am in. I will make those decisions and look for this. Now, if it starts breaking down and making lower lows and lower highs, then I will go with the first red day. Now, this is also feeding the information day one, day two, day two is broken out to the upside, uh, depending on how this breaks out. So this is broke out extremely far. So maybe day three will work the high of the week and break down. You know, who really knows, but if this breaks out just slightly like this and closes, then maybe I can look for a trend trade the following day because this might be the trap. Uh, first red day and then sort of a first green day, like a day one breakout sort of scenario where they broke out. And then maybe the next day we'll dump back down a little bit and go vertical to the upside. Uh, but this is, like I said, all feeding you really valuable, important information, which is exactly what happened here in this scenario where you get a pump day, a first red day. Again, day one of the cycle. This is the high of the current week. It, it popped up and the breakout failed and gave you a first red day. They closed below the opening price for that day and also the closing price from the previous day and then went into consolidation and broke out making higher highs and higher lows on this day and went vertical. Now, you know, maybe you tried to take this short and it didn't follow through and you get stopped out break even or whatever and that's fine. But as far as what the market is telling you, what information is it feeding you on day two of the cycle, day one, day two, now day two is a breakout day countering this first red day. As long as the market continues to make higher highs and higher lows the next day, you can absolutely, or me personally, I absolutely will look for 
the expansion trade to the upside. So we've got higher highs and higher lows, and then the market, the price action, again, we're making higher highs and higher lows. All that's perfect to look for a dump and then a consolidation and then an engulfment to go along with the trend and the expansion to the upside. And that's something that I would call a first red day trap. And if I were to flip this chart over, that would be a first green day trap. So if this would be like, they tried to pump it back up and then it rolled over the next day and then dumps down on that next day. And this is the trending cycle. This is where a lot of people get confused about, man, what, you know, what should I be doing day one, two, and three? What, and then they get messed up with the cycle and then it all kind of just goes downhill from there. So in a trending cycle, let's start over here. Day three, this turned into a day one. Notice they broke out. So this was day three broken out. It has to start to cycle over again. It can't just be day four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, so day three go, goes back to one. Then day two turns into an inside day, also a first green day. Now day three breaks out to the upside. So now we're in day three, it's broken out. The breakout did not fail. So that's gonna reset now down to day one. Day two trades back into the low of day one and then breaks out to the upside. So now we have day two going up. Day three of the cycle again breaks out and closes. So there's been no failed breakout and that just continues to happen. This is an extended run, one, two, three, four days up. It's either gonna go up for the fifth day, sixth day, maybe the cycle will reset. They get a little reset down here. Maybe it's gonna continue to go higher. Uh, but regardless, it's important to understand that when you're in a strong breakout, this will happen day one, two, and three. And if you just constantly look at day three and think reversal, you're gonna get smoked a lot of times. So you need to understand number one structure, number two price action, and number three, that the trending model of the three-day cycle does occur somewhat frequently. So you need to be aware of it. Another little piece of the puzzle, is when day three turns into an inside day. What do you do? Well, whenever day three turns into an inside day, I use this as a pause day because it hasn't gone higher. It hasn't gone lower on day three. And a lot of times that will set the market up for a strong reversal or a strong trend trade on the following day because of that inside bar. So down here, day one, uh, they broke out. This is that two day variation of day one. They broke out down low and then it failed the following day. So I project that across, boom, breakout failed day one, day two, day three breaks out to the upside. Day three goes back to day one reset. Then we get a day two, day one, day two breakout. Good stuff. Now day three turns into an inside day. They have not hit previous days high or previous days low. So this day three inside day is also a first red day. And on the following day, I can look for that first red day trade. There's your end of day consolidation, failed breakout at the high of the day, breaks down, lower lows, lower highs, London session, lower lows, lower highs, and then it goes back into consolidation for the rest of the day. If the market lands on day three, and that day three does result in an inside day, the day that closed an inside bar, they haven't hit previous days high or low, I will count this as a pause day and shift it over to the next day. Although this does not occur frequently, it's still good to know how to respond in the situation so that way you don't get confused and start messing the cycle up all over the place and not knowing how to respond to the market's behavior. And I just wanna remind everybody, it is not about trading the same instrument every single day. It is about finding the different types of three-day templates, the three-day cycle templates uh, that best fits your trading so that way you can benefit from it. Uh, if you just wanna trade one pair every single day, then these setups aren't gonna show up every day. But if you look at a basket of you know five, 10 instruments, you're going to find a three-day cycle set up pretty much almost every single day. Okay, so let's bring all of this together. What kind of three-day templates, what kind of three-day cycles am I looking for? So there's going to be a day one outside day, day two inside day, day three trade. You can have a three-day rectangle, day one first red or first green day. Day two does the opposite. This is those trap trades. I really like to see the market break out of the other side. So if you get a first red day, and then it, on the next day after that first red day, it breaks out to the upside like we saw in those examples. Um, I really like those. And then day three, I'd be looking for the continuation trend trade. Day one, day two, signal day, day three trade. So this would be like day one, uh, Failed breakout, day two, first red day, day three, looking for that short trade. Uh, going back to this day one outside, day two inside, day three trade, these show up all the time, all right? So you're gonna have an outside day where they spike the high and the low of the previous day's range and then pull back up on the inside. And then that's basically what is this doing? It's creating a box, a larger range. And then on the following day, they don't go outside of that range, right? So they just trades on the inside of that box. And a lot of times what happens is that builds up a good amount of consolidation and you can either get a trend trade from the inside of the box back towards the outside of the box or once they break out of the box in your session breakout pullback now you're looking at kind of like the three-day rectangle sort of scenario 
And we actually saw one of these three-day rectangles last week uh, on the NASDAQ. This is a 15-minute chart. Uh, actually, I think this might have been this week. I have to go back and check. Either way, this was very recently. Uh, where they put in a peak formation on Monday and a peak formation high on Tuesday, consolidation in the middle. They attempted to go higher on this day. Uh, this was after the New York session had ended. You know, after 9.30, there was really no engulfment over here. Now, there was over here, but this is after the session has ended. Again, going from the inside of the box back towards the outside of the box. Uh, maybe you could have taken this short, thinking that it's going to go from the inside of the box back towards the outside of the box here. It didn't quite follow through. You get to the end of the session, you take your profits, and you're done. Uh, but on the next day, now they've made a higher high and pulled back, and they're making higher highs and higher lows. Again, Asia, London, there we go. There's a small little rectangle and a breakout, breakout pullback, and it just continues to run all day long into the New York session open, 930, engulfment, and then continuation. Okay, we've got US 30, day one of the cycle. They broke out on Friday and failed on the following day, so that over the course of two days variation, day one, day two. Uh, day three turns into an inside first red day. Okay, so now we're going to repeat day three on the next day. And then we have lower lows and lower highs on the day. This is like a nice little pump and dump pattern. Higher high, or lower lows and lower highs on the day, breaking down, making lower lows. Boom, boom. Pumps back up, one, two, three, and then engulfment down, 930 for that continuation down. Now, after this happens, you get a peak formation at the low of the week. And this is what I was talking about in the intro of this video how everything just keeps on evolving. And that's why I love the three-day cycle is because it really is like you're trying to piece together the puzzle. You know, most people would see this and maybe think, you know, especially if it closed a certain way, it's like, oh, maybe tomorrow is going to continue uh, with this big, strong move. Look how strong this is. It's going to go down forever and they're holding this and then you get this. Okay, so now we have a first green day, peak formation low at the low of the current week, day one of the cycle, first green day. And then on the following day, now, this didn't happen in the New York session. This happened in the afternoon session. Day two, trending away from day one lows. And then day three. So this is day two breakout for uh, day one breakouts to the upside. Now we have, again, higher highs and higher lows on the day. There's your high, your higher high. This is your higher low down here. And trading back down into the low, higher high, trade back down into the low, engulfment. And then there is the trend trade on day three. Oh, my face is in the way. Help. There we go. There is the trend trade on day three. Uh, higher high, pullback, and then the continuation. All right, gold. This is the outside inside day that I was talking about. So we got an outside day. They spike both sides of the range. Notice they hit previous days high, previous days low, pull back up on the inside of the range day one. Now we have day two. This is an inside day and also a first green day. So this is our box. This entire week ends up staying on the inside of this, but you're not going to know that uh, in real time. All you're going to do is look at structure. Me personally, what I'm doing is I'm going to try and trade from the inside of the box back towards the outside of the box if that presents. So we're making higher highs and higher lows. This was a good first hour trade, first bar, first 15 minute bar, trying to get back towards the outside of the box, taking profits as you go along. Uh, but then it reverses. All right, so now we've got uh, inside day, day two, first green day, day three, breakout day. So this broke out. This also reverts back to day one, day two of the cycle. Now you have a first red day. And then on the following day, you get a breakout day. Okay, so day one, uh, day two, day three, this is that first red day trap. Day one, day two, and then day three, looking for the trend trade, higher highs and higher lows, trade back into the low of the day, uh, or in the low in general, consolidation, and then first bar, first 15 minutes of the New York session. And this is oil over the course of three weeks, all right? And I've gone and just listed out the entire three-day cycle, uh, starting with day one back over here, because sometimes it'll be a little bit more difficult to find day one, unless you find the, the, the uh, goodness gracious, the last time they failed to break out, right? So failed, failed breakout here, day one. Day two went lower. Day three reverts back to day one. We're staying broken out, day two. Um, and then day three reverts back to day one again, day two, uh, day three, right? So this is kind of where I wanted to start this back over in this area, but I had to lead you all into this so that way you know I'm not just starting in some random place. All right, so we got a day two, first green day. You got a low of session trade after first green day here, uh, day two, day three, day one. So we're going back to day one at the close of the day. And then on uh, day two, you get your first red day, which also reverts the cycle back to day one. Now on day two, this is where you get your breakouts. Now it's maybe a first red day trap. Boom, boom, boom. You get your breakout day over here, project that across. All right, so day two, uh, first red day trap opportunity from the low of the day, boom. Okay, now we got day three reverting back to day one and that just continues over and over again. I really tried to slow down this video and go back and re-explain things multiple times. Please let me know in the comments below if the pace was a little bit better. I know a lot of people complain that I'm going too fast. So if I did go too fast, maybe just hit that playback speed down to half and you can watch a little bit slower. Hope you all enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below if you did. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will see you in the next video.